Hi, I'm Alicia, and today I'm gonna show you how to quickly take a screenshot on your Mac. Taking a screenshot and editing it is a breeze on Mac, regardless of the task. In this video, you'll learn how to take a screenshot on your Mac. Then we'll explore many solutions that can complement the native Mac OS screenshotting functionality. You'll also learn how to customize the screenshot tool. But before we get too far, I wanna let you know that there will be links to more resources in the video's description. And remember, subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications for future helpful content. All right, guys, let's go. We of course have to talk about the built-in Mac OS screenshot app before other tools. You won't even know you're using an app if you work with the keyboard shortcuts in most circumstances. It's the kind of seamless approach you get as standard with native Apple software. Even opening the screenshot app itself is a cinch. If you open the app without using the quick shortcuts, you'll find screen recording functionality too. This ramps up the value of the app and, along with other bundled apps such as iMovie, it gives you a solid base for taking your first steps into explainer videos. Unfortunately, with the screenshot app, there's no audio recording for starters, and you'll find scant options for working with the captures you take. You'll see, compared to other tools, there's a disconnect between the screen capture technology and the annotation features. Granted, Apple wants you to use preview and markup for annotating screenshots primarily. Although you'll find a solid set of tools there, it lacks some sought after features such as obfuscation. For more advanced markup and annotation tools, you'll have to look elsewhere. The app designed for use with Evernote has become a go-to screenshot solution for many Mac users. However, we'd bet that you're only using Skitch for annotations rather than screen captures. With Skitch, what impresses us are the annotation tools and they work well in combination with the macOS native tool. Before you get too excited though, know that the tools available aren't of the depth of a graphic design tool. That said, you get the fundamentals as part of the package and they work well. There are text boxes, shapes, pen tools, cropping tools, and obfuscation. We'd say that the obfuscation option alone makes it worth it to have Skitch installed. It's sometimes tricky to create neat boxes that sit nicely with the original image, but the pixelated effect is pleasing and it doesn't feel obtrusive. Because of this, the annotation features are going to be your primary reason for using Skitch on your Mac. That said, heavy Evernote users will find value in Skitch too. And for straightforward screenshot tasks, it's a rugged solution to beat. Snagit is a paid premium screen capture tool with many features and functionality that rivals top graphic design tools. It's a cross-platform software that works well with images and videos and outputs to several different formats. What's more, you can create videos from images or record using your webcam to produce full featured explainer content. Snagit will snuggle into the workflow and technical writers or those writing up documentation. We like how versatile the tools are and how you can edit the screenshots you make. For example, you can use the grab text tool to extract a copy from your screen capture and use it elsewhere. You're also able to replace the text in a screenshot due to Snagit's recognition technology. There's plenty more in the Snagit toolbox that lets you manipulate screen captures too, such as the ability to annotate stepped workflows in your captures and work with elements to move them around the image. In our opinion, Snagit is a power user's tool. CleanShot X is a paid super tool for capturing the screen on a Mac, and it comes with lots of helpful functionality. Its developers bill it as a replacement for the native screenshot app, and it's easy to see why. It comes with the ability to take full screen grabs and partial ones too. It also lets you capture specific windows, both with and without the background. It's already better than Apple's native tool, but it goes further. You can also perform scrolling captures, which means that grabbing the whole page on even lengthy websites is possible. There is one aspect of CleanShot X, one that's in its name that we particularly like. You're able to hide whatever clutter is in your desktop so that capture looks neat and tidy. By clicking a button, CleanShot X can hide these for you temporarily. As a replacement tool, CleanShot X hits the mark especially for bloggers. For example, you can pin screenshots so that they're always visible. It's helpful when you're creating tutorials or blog posts illustrating steps. You're also able to configure the app's comprehensive preferences to tailor your screenshots for specific use cases. For example, you can set a custom wallpaper for different projects and match the blog's branding. 
What's more, for some blogs that use smaller image sizes, you're able to scale retina images down to a standard resolution. There's no reason to skip over ClearShot X if you're a blogger or online writer. It's a native macOS app that can be a complete replacement for Apple's solution, and we haven't even mentioned the annotation or cloud-based features of the tool. Now we've looked at some front-running solutions for taking a screenshot on your Mac. Let's break down how to capture the screen. Throughout the following few sections, we'll offer four different methods for capturing the screen, and we'll note when some apps do things differently from the standard approach. The most basic application of taking a screenshot is to capture the entire screen. Usually this includes the toolbar, dock if visible, and any files or folders on your desktop. It is a literal capture of the entire screen as you view it. It's initially a low effort approach to creating a screenshot. You'll simply press the required keyboard shortcut and save the capture. However, from there, you'll likely need to do some editing to make the image suitable for your content. At a basic level, this will involve cropping. However, it could also need annotation and obfuscation too. Full screen captures are good where you need to show the entire context of the screen. Website showcases are one example, where the whole page is the focus. Of course, if you have a lot to capture, you're going to take as many screenshots as possible. However, full screenshots can be helpful where you have to balance specific dimensions for what the screenshot displays. For example, take the Kinsta homepage. If you can't go wider than 1400 pixels for screenshots, for example, a good approach is to capture the entire screen and use the marquee or crop tools to mark out the correct dimensions. You can then make sure the area you're capturing will fit within your frame while ensuring the alignment is perfect. To take a full screen capture, you'll select the option from your app's menu. For example, in the native screenshot app, it's a selection box. However, in CleanShot X, it's part of the toolbar's drop-down menu. While Snagit also lets you access full screen capture from the toolbar, there are also other options to consider. The native keyboard shortcut for taking a full screen capture is Command-Shift-3. You can set it up in whatever app you're using as the default option. However, note that the Screenshot app also lets you access the option by opening the app itself with Command-Shift-5. Generally, each screenshot will save as a new image on your desktop. However, by holding Control in addition to the regular keyboard shortcut, you'll be able to copy the capture to the clipboard too. It means you can paste the image into another app, such as a graphic design program or similar. However, some apps have different ways to copy to the clipboard. For example, Snagit has a toggle switch, while CleanShot X asks you to set the functionality within the Preferences screen. Meanwhile, Skitch treats copying images to clipboard like text through an option in the File menu. Most of the time, you won't want to capture the whole screen, but only a smaller portion of it. Fortunately, most apps let you drag rectangles around whatever elements you'd like to capture. When you take a screenshot on your Mac, this rectangle will disregard everything outside of the boundary you've set. It has a wealth of uses, enough that area captures of various types will probably constitute the majority of your screenshots. It's ideal to provide a clear focus on your image's essential aspects, remove elements from the screenshot, and much more. For this method, you'll usually drag out the boundary using a built-in marquee tool, then refine it before taking the capture. Command-Shift-4 is the default keyboard shortcut for activating the selection crosshairs, though the screenshot app also lets you define the screen area. There will be lots of times you'll want to capture specifics, such as a drop-down menu. Area capture is suitable for this, but you may find that the final image gets scaled up and looks unnatural. However, there is another part of the area capture process that could help you. Capturing application windows on Mac is fantastic for showing focused context in your screenshots. This approach can offer focus by clearing out everything superfluous. What's more, macOS also captures the window shadowing by default, which gives your screenshots a professional sheen. The most obvious use case here is to capture one window that fits your topic. Given that this is essentially an area capture with precise dimensions, the process to take these screenshots is almost the same. To start, activate the area capture tool as usual in your chosen app. For the screenshot app, you'll use the Command-Shift-5 shortcut and select the capture selected window option. 
However, in other apps, there may be a specific option within the Preferences or Toolbar. However, in Snagit, you'll need to select the Mission Control option to capture windows. While taking a screenshot of a window is a handy solution, there's a little more you can do to make the process even more focused and specific. While you've been trying out window captures using your app of choice, you may have noticed that drop-down menus don't form part of the screenshot for some windows. It is one area that is lacking with all screenshot apps. However, you're usually able to hover over a menu while selecting a specific window to capture it. In Snagit, there's a dedicated option for capturing menus. The one drawback here is that you're only able to capture the menu itself, rather than everything around it that might offer context. Although it's potentially phasing out, the shortcut Command-Shift-6 can also capture screenshots through the touch bar. However, new Macs based on Apple Silicon chips don't appear to have the touch bar. So whether this shortcut will remain in future macOS versions remains to be seen. Finally, a quick tip if you want to capture specific windows and menus while using keyboard shortcuts. Command Shift 4 is usually the shortcut for setting active area. Once the mode is activated, you can press the space bar to enter window selection mode and click the mouse or touchpad to capture the screenshot. While this is the default for Screenshot app, other apps such as CleanShot X will often map the same key for screenshotting. Finally, if you'd like to challenge your skill, you can also move the selected boundary around on the screen by holding Command Shift 4 Spacebar. It lets you reposition the capture area to get the perfect screenshot. To take a capture, lift the spacebar. So far, we've only discussed instant captures. We set the boundary for the screenshot and captured the screen immediately. In some cases, though, you may want to delay the capture for a few seconds. It makes sense if you want to take a screenshot on your Mac of a specific event, such as a menu notification. You may also want to set a timer if you need to set up the capture specifics. For example, while opening a menu or when applying other shortcuts. Screenshot app gives you a choice of either 5 or 10 seconds delay on the capture. While CleanShot X gives you a 2 to 15 second timer, Snagit is the most flexible here. You're able to set a custom timer based on your exact needs. Skitch is the least flexible. It only offers a 5 second timer as part of a dedicated timed crosshair snapshot option. Of course, you've already discussed how lean Skitch compares to others and why this is, but it does mean that difficult time captures will require a more full-featured screenshot app. In addition to capturing still images, many screenshot apps can also record your screen and save the result as a video file. While Skitch doesn't offer this functionality, the rest of the tools in our list do. And they each provide a different way to access video recording. The process of capturing a video is similar to defining an area of the screen. You'll drag a marquee tool to define the boundaries, then begin recording. It's even simpler than image capture, and it's an excellent option for quick explainer videos sent through email or chat. You'll find the screenshot app's recording functionality within the app itself, Command-Shift-5. It's pretty basic and comes with few options. However, both Snagit and CleanShot X have many options that let you create optimized screen recordings. Both of these tools let you capture screen recordings down to a specific window, unlike the Screenshot app. It keeps the file size down and retains viewer focus. To wrap up this video on how to take a screenshot on your Mac, let's discuss annotations. Even if your screenshotting skills are sharp, Poor annotation can ruin your image and confuse the end user. To that end, here's our advice on making the best annotations possible. The best annotation is none at all. In other words, try to take a screenshot that accurately shows the point you're trying to make without words. Stick to simple boxes for the majority of your annotations. Arrows, text, and other elements can take focus away from what you're trying to showcase, and they can make your screenshots look unprofessional. Steer clear of the default color schemes and sizes. It's easy to tell if someone's used Skitch or Preview because they both use distinct colors for annotations. Use colors that contrast with your screenshots, but keep it consistent throughout all the annotations you make. 
A yellow or orange color often works well, and you'll notice that Kinsta users are familiar purple for annotations on the blog. You'll sometimes grab sensitive information along with your screenshots, especially if you're using an account-based app or are working with system files. In these cases, it's a good idea to obfuscate the information using a suitable tool. Skitch, Snagit, and CleanShot X all have this obfuscation option, a much better option than pen scribbles or ugly boxes. Finally, you might even want to create a consistent framing for your images, such as a dedicated browser mockup tool. It makes it look as though your screenshots are in a browser or other app window. There are a few free tools that help with this, such as Screely and ShotMocker. However, if you have the time and the need, you can also create your mockups within your favorite graphics program using a dedicated template. Do you take screenshots on your Mac? And if so, will any of these apps help you? Let us know in the comments section below. Kinsta's WordPress hosting can speed up your website by up to 200% and you'll get 24-7 support from our expert WordPress engineers. Let us show you the Kinsta difference. Try a free demo of our My Kinsta dashboard at demo.kinsta.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more tutorials, explainers, and helpful content like this.